Hi, welcome to Prince of Peace and our annual Trunk or Treat Festival. We're glad you've come. I'm Pastor John Mitchell, and on behalf of everyone here, I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. You might have heard about Prince of Peace before, or maybe not. Maybe you've heard of Lutherans before, maybe not. But we would like, while you're waiting in line here, to explain a little bit about our ministry if we could. We'd like to maybe clear up some misconceptions that people might have about what a Lutheran is. So what's going on, man? What do you want to talk about? Well, I'm working on my message for Sunday, and I just can't think of a good way to start it. You know, I need a good story or something to get it going. Yeah, that's always tough. Well, you know, we could do what we always do. Sure, let's try it. I brought it along with me. All right. All right, let's begin. Let's see here. All right, uh, looks like you just need one more noun. All right, one more noun. Bible. Ooh, hey, that might even fit. Will that work? Yeah. All right, here's what you got. Here's going to be your introductory story. Once upon a time in Salt Lake City, I was praying because my arm was hurting. Makes sense. So to make myself feel better, I went to church. The trees were red and the sky was blue. It was a nice day. Suddenly a rabid dog, this is where it kind of gets interesting, jumped out at me. I screamed and grabbed my Bible. I was about to be bitten when Carl Malone came out of the church and stopped it. Then he invited me to eat pizza with him. I asked him to autograph my Bible. Will that work? I like it. All right. Well, not exactly. A Lutheran pastor spends nearly eight years learning the original languages of the Bible, Greek and Hebrew, before he becomes a pastor. Our pastors spend a great deal of time in these languages as they prepare for each Sunday message. They then take the words of the Bible and apply them to people's lives today. The message teaches us about ourselves, and more importantly, about God and His love for us through Jesus. The message is reliable and relevant. If you'd like, you can watch videos of recent messages on our website at www. Dot P-O-P-S-L-C dot org. Or you can come check it out in person on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. or 10.45 a.m. We'd love to have you as our guest. Yeah? Hey, Pastor. Hey, Justin. I was, uh, we're making that video, you know, for the, the trunk or treat, um, and trying to answer some questions, you know, people might have about, you know, what is a Lutheran, things like that, and I think maybe one of the questions that a lot of people have is, you know, uh, why are Lutherans so crazy about their crosses, you know, why do they have them up everywhere, and I was kind of hoping maybe you could just give a, a basic answer as to why that is. Um, I, you know, I, I kind of thought it was common knowledge because... We have them up everywhere for the vampire apocalypse. Wait. You didn't see one out there, did you? Um, no. Team Edward. Again, not so much. People have often wondered why Lutherans have so many crosses. Some wonder if we worship them, uh, which the Bible clearly forbids. Others have said, it's so weird, it would be like putting up uh, some hanging gallows on the wall or wearing a gold-plated electric chair around your neck. It can be kind of confusing. But the Bible actually tells us that the entire message recorded in it can be summarized just in the picture of a cross. In the book of Romans, there's a passage that says the wages of sin is death. A wage is something that you and I earn. 
We go to work, we work hard, and at the end of that week, we take home our wage. At the end of our life, the Bible says that we will have earned an entirely different kind of wage. It's not because we've worked for it, but because we sin. But thankfully, the Bible, the passage in Romans, doesn't end there. It, it goes on to say, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. A gift is something completely different than a wage. A gift isn't something that you or I could earn, but rather it is something that is given to us purely out of love. God's gift to you is life, eternal life. And he gives that to you, not because you or I have earned or deserved it, not because we work for it, not as our wage, but he gives it to us purely because he loves us. And that love was shown to us in Jesus, who dies for the sins of the world on a cross. So why do we as Lutherans have so many crosses? Not because it's a gruesome picture of death, but actually because it's a picture of life. Eternal life, God's gift to you through Jesus Christ. Maybe that's the picture that you get in your mind when you think of a private religious school. But actually, our Christian school, which opened in 1997, currently has almost 100 students, 12 staff members, and covers all of the major subjects you'd find in a typical, typical school. But while most schools solely focus on preparing children to have successful futures in this world, at our school, we are blessed to also prepare our students for eternity. Sure, we could talk about how our test scores are above average, but when it comes to the classroom, it's God's word that really takes priority, all the way from our three-year-olds through eighth grade. They learn to know what it means to love their neighbor, what it means to love God, but most importantly, they learn to know that they are loved by God. Our student body is made up of children from any number of different religious backgrounds, so church membership is not a requirement in order to enroll your children. We have a few openings remaining, so if you're looking for something different for your child, you're looking for something deeper, something that will last forever, ask one of our staff members for more information about our school or check out our website. Hey, Justin, how's it going, man? Oh, hey, Noah. I uh, was just stopping by because I wanted to drop off some stuff and see if you wanted to come to my Lutheran church with me on Sunday. Yeah, um, I just, I'm not really the church going type, but uh, but thanks, you know, for, for inviting me and whatnot. Well, you know, you don't have to be the uh, church going. Oh, man, it is sweltering out here. Isn't it just, it's, I'm burning up. Yes, I mean, it's October, but that's yeah, kind of unseasonably warm. Hey, actually, that reminds me, though. Um, maybe you would like a nice, cool glass of Kool-Aid to cool you down. Yeah, that is so thoughtful. I would love a drink from this Kool-Aid. Awesome. Drink up. <sighs> oh, Pretty good, huh? That is amazing. Yeah. Hey, um... What time did you say your church was this Sunday? I didn't. Rest assured, Lutheran Kool-Aid does not exist. And if it does for some strange reason, we're not going to ask you to drink it. Nearly 60% of the members here at Prince of Peace became Lutheran later on in life. They weren't born into the church, and they're not lifelong members. So how does it happen? Well, it could be that a friend or neighbor invited them to check it out. Or perhaps someone was just really struggling and searching and, and wandered into our building one day, not really sure why. 
Many of them had little to no religious background, but, but for one reason or another, the religion that they had didn't fill the void in their life and didn't answer the questions that they had. We have a basic Christianity or a Bible information class that we run throughout the year that strives to do exactly that, to answer life's biggest questions. A new class is starting soon. We'd like you to join us. So if you're someone who's wandering or feel a little lost, or maybe you're just waiting for that friend to invite you, then let me be the first to do so. Come check us out. You've got nothing to lose and eternal life to gain. We hope you enjoyed the video and thanks again for coming this evening. Be safe and God's blessings on your evening.